Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Ocean Chief. We are live once again for Tier 1. We are at Bahrain. It is round 10. The business end of the season has begun. I am uh, unfortunately not joined by Tipsy Bob today. Uh, I think he might uh, might be asleep currently. Uh, so hopefully he will join me at some point. Um, until then, you'll have to make do with myself. Um, Let's have a look at the standings as the qualifying is already underway. So, McKender, 116. He is leading. Uh, Justin, 114. And Danny Coe's dropped down to 108 in the standings. 108 points. Uh, those results are provisional. We are still waiting for uh, some verdicts to come back from the last round. So, they, they may affect those, those standings. But for now, it's McKender in the lead. With Jason in P2, Danny Co P3, and as you can see, way out in front in the constructors is McLaren. But without further ado, let's get down to the qualifying grid as times are starting to come in. And uh, already seeing a 128 on the board from Fox in the Red Bull. Uh, so let's see, we should be able to join someone as they're about to complete their lap. We've got a few drivers out on mediums. Um, Hello to everybody in chat, by the way. I see a lot of highs. As Justin is making his way through Sector 1 into Sector 2 here. Um, as I said, on the medium tire. So, quite a number of drivers out there on mediums. Choosing to save a set of sauce for the race. So, yeah. Hello, Delta. McKender, Danny Co. Uh, McKender, Danny Co. Obviously, racing. These two are top of the charts in tier one, as is Justin, who we're on board with now. And you can see it's quite a nice flowing circuit, quite technical. Some heavy braking zones. CM Punk in chat. It's the main man, the main commentator of SLR. Uh, great stream there on Wednesday with tier three. Great one. Hopefully this one lives up to the, uh, the hype. Carefree definitely warming up Bahrain for us as Justin makes his way through the final corner, runs down to the start finish line, bit of DRS before he crosses the line, and it's enough for 28.7 on mediums, and that is quite impressive from him. Noah as well on soft 28.4, Curly Voice crosses the line 28.7. He, of course, coming P2 in the tier free race, racing yesterday as well, not doing too bad yesterday, and uh. Let's see, uh, a driver I do want to look at, Equals, I just missed him there as he crossed the line, Equals set pole yesterday, won the race, very commanding uh, race from him, and he goes top of the pop, so this is going to be interesting, the top top finisher in tier 2 against tier 1 drivers, a lot of these guys, uh, the veteran tier 1 guys, no assists, so this is uh, going to be an interesting assist versus no assist battle for pull. And uh, who else have we got on track? We've got Eagle Ghost representing uh, Tilda as well, who's raced all three races this week, I believe. Crystals, who didn't have a good showing yesterday. He has started a lap there, but let's just ride on board with Eagle Ghost as he rides through. He's uh, coming off the gas massively there so he's had an issue he's actually got a time on the board so this is his in lap so no point following him around uh x crystals let's have a look at him very fast guy can put a fast lap together but can he uh can he do it under qualifying conditions and let's have a look at his his sector two uh time and this notorious corkscrew hairpin coming up. A lot of drivers don't like it. I don't, if he can get it right, it feels really good, but it is very tricky, especially under qualifying and race conditions. When you're trying to eke out everything out of the car and its performance, Crystal's looking pretty good. Running, taking, yeah, running wide there, taking a lot of curb on the entry. And uh, yeah, very flowing back end of the circuit here. It's all about carrying the momentum down through this corner. The ultimate corner is coming up here. Sorry, the, the final corner is coming up here. Yeah, again, want to use as much curb as possible, as much as you can get away with. Hits apex a little bit too hard there, but gets on the power nice and early. DRS open, 
and it's a 129 flat for uh, X Crystals. The curly voice in chat with a big pink hand wave. Delta saying nice lap curly. Don't give him a big head. Now, big heads are not aerodynamic. That will slow him down during the race. Uh, we've got a, we've got Matt as well, who was looking pretty pacey yesterday in tier two, um, having some technical issues. Hopefully those don't reappear today. I want to look at Danny Co as well, who's actually on the uh, back straight, heading down to the final corner. Yep. Oh, and misses the apex a bit there, but does carry out a lot of speed, so this should be good from him. 26, 27, 28 flat so he goes p2 not quite enough for pull right now but nine minutes left on the clock plenty of time plenty of time to get a lap in excuse me while i take a breather i just need to take a little sip of juice p12 meepo as well as he's put a 129.2 that's an unusually i don't want to say slow time but it's not up to his usual uh, pace. He's usually at the front end of the grid, in quality at least. Um, Epson with a 29.2. Janus from Tier 2, 29.6 from him. Good to see him on track today. The Tier 1 big boys. McKander doing a McKander in the pits. Just chilling, eating some ice cream. McKander, of course, leading the championship provisionally. Not a care in the world, just hanging out in the pits there. Might see a, a la last dash lap from him, um, but wouldn't be surprised if he just stays in the, the pit garage and eats his ice cream and chills, vibes, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Danny Ko, of course, coming in. Uh, who else is out there? We've got Tilda on a lap. He's just begun his lap. See how he gets on. John Halto in chat. Yellow, yellow. Tilda not using all the track there. Uh, probably just wants to get a time in here as uh, you don't want to invalidate. Uh, you should have brought a time for another run though, so can't afford to push it a little bit here. But it's good always to have that delta to race against on, uh, on your final run. Uh, let's see what Tilda can do here heading into the hairpin. I think Lepson just jumped up there, I think. Yeah, Lepson at 128.9, so he's in the 28. So yeah, I think 28, so the order of the day. If you a low 28, probably good enough for top 10 right now. But if you're looking for that pull, it's going to be at 27 and below. 27.942 is currently pulled, equals on an eye lap as well, so Interested to see how he does on his second run as Tilda makes his way down to the final corner. Yeah, quite tentative for the final corner there. Not making use of all the momentum and it's a 129.6 for Tilda. He'd be glad to get that valid lap time on the board so he can hit something to race against on his next run out. McKender still in the pits chilling. Justin Ertz lays the gauntlet down. New assist driver in P1 for now. He calls. We'll look to respond to that shortly. Uh, yep, and here we go. This is equals. He is on a lap here. Heading down into turn one. Very, very heavy braking zone. And it's all about getting on the throttle and just. Yeah, the back end gets quite loose there. You just want to. Balance that out as best you can, and uh, yeah, equals definitely using all the track there, running wide before uh, turning the car in, getting the best. Oh, and he is up on his time, 0.006. It's not going to be enough for pull, but yeah, sector one, not many, uh, not many corners in there, but generally that is where you make up and lose a lot of time. So we'll see how he does in sector two. Ooh, sounded like a lock up there, but. We're going to get a sector two time shortly. 
as he makes his way down the long straight. This is the, uh, I think this is the, the third straight you'll get the arrest on. Start finish straight will be the first. Uh, and then after the uh, first few corners, you'll get another DRS straight, uh, and then that third DRS straight. Very short uh, DRS straight as uh, Equals makes his way through traffic. Let's see how he does through the final corner. Not using quite as much curb as we've seen previously from the likes of Danico, and yeah, that's why Equals has bailed from this lap. So he knew it wasn't going to be good enough to improve or to uh, take that pull. So He's chosen to come into the pits and uh, put on a fresh set of sauce and uh, have another go at it. Tuj not on a lap as well, so who have we got out there? Everybody in the pits. Fox is the only one coming out of the pits. And uh, yeah, we'll see how he does. 1 to 28.8 is his current time on the board. Plenty of room for improvement, but that is not a bad lap actually. 28.8 probably would have been good for uh, top four in tier three. I feel like we need more volume. We need more volume. If the audio, yeah, let me know in, in chat how the audio levels are. Uh, can you hear me okay? Can you hear the session okay? That is loud now. Can you hear me? Hello? Maybe too loud? But yeah, Fox into Sector 2. We will get a Sector 2 time soon enough. Uh, looks like a tidy enough lap from him. Let's go on board as he goes into the corkscrew. Oh, and he misses the apex by a country mile. And uh, I wonder if he's... No, he's choosing to continue this lap. Probably going to see that Sector 2 time and make a decision there whether to bail from this one. Looks a bit hesitant going through that last corner. Uh, Sector 2 times about to pop up in the top right. Let's see what he's got. He is slightly up in the time. It's not much. It's uh, half a tenth as he goes completely wide there and that is in Valadito. Yeah, okay. I will turn that down. Uh, I think it's just my headphones. I need to adjust. So I'm not really hearing too much of the uh, the actual race session. Let's see if we can fix that. Oh, that's better. Okay. Yeah. So Justin, in chat, helping us with audio issues and also uh, setting a, a time good enough for pull. So great at multitasking is uh, Justin. It seems. Uh, I wonder if we're gonna get rain in the the race. <laughs> rain in the desert. It can happen, you know. I mean, look at Dubai. I don't know if you saw the news this week, but Dubai is flooded. So who knows? It could happen. Doubtful, but it could happen as... Uh, let's have a look. Matt is on a lap here. He is just about the get through Sector 1. He is slightly down on his time, so that's... This is going to be his last run, I think. If I can uh, just check the time. I can see that right now. It's a 126, so this will be his last chance at it uh, I mean he can back out of this lap recharge his uh, battery and uh, do another run and I wonder if no he's going for it he's got DRS open and ERS is in hot lap mode so let's see what he does in sector 2 he navigates some traffic Ferrari getting out of the way there uh, Yep, Matt, I completely missed that sector two time, but he is con continuing on down the road here, uh, draining that battery, so he is still going for a P4 currently. Is he going to find some time in these last few corners? And bump this up a few positions. 28.1, is it going to be better? It is slightly better, but not enough to make up any position. Um... So he is, that's him done for now. Who else we got out there? We've got everybody, actually, uh, even McKender. Uh, let's see who is going to be across, first across the line. We've got a few Aston Martins. Uh, yeah, actually, Equals. I want to watch this. Equals is about to begin this lap. Let's have a look. Let's ride on board. Let's see if he can do it. If he can still pull in the dying moments of this race. Ooh, heavy 
breaking into turn one and it looked like he got that all right and a bit of a wiggle on the exit but didn't seem to lose him too much momentum sector one time will come up and indicate if this is a solid lap time oh that looked pretty tidy as well looks like equals is on it but he is slightly ever so slightly down in his time I think this is going to be a big ask for equals to find two tenths just over two tenths in these last sectors uh, just an arts is uh, is he on a lap actually I think he is he's uh, up in his time according to that sector two time just one tenth so I think he might back out but I think he's got it covered equals looking good a man who could do something here is Danny Coe goes across the line P2 equals we'll see that and uh, I don't think he's yeah I think he's backed out of his lap here uh, equals is no longer on a lap so he's bailed from that he's done to P3 who else can jump him uh, Noah up to P5 Tanari in the Ferrari P6 Tuj as well on a lap here uh, he's actually He's coming out of the final lap here, so we'll see what he can do on the run down to the start finish line. He improves ever so slightly enough to take Tanari's P7 spot and drop him down to P8. So Tuj P7 in the Aston Martin. Crowley voice P9 with a 28 point free. Great lap from him. Beats his uh, Greek compatriot uh, Giannis. 28.3 P10 for him. Uh, a McKender. Did not get a lap in. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I thought he was actually on a lap there. But he did not get a lap in. McKander, our championship leader, will start, start last. I, I, so when I read your, your comment there, but I actually thought it was John who said that. And I was like, you're in PGSL? Uh... Iceman saying, I would have been literally last. I did 29.2 in PGSL. Actually, you wouldn't have been last. You'd have been second last because McKender did not set a time. Chief, can you hear me? Hey! Just Let's in time go, for the oh race. My God. Oh, man, I was getting sweaty there. I was going to have to do a race start. Let's go, bro. Hopefully. Is the formation lap still on? Sorry, I'm coming now. Yep, formation lap is on. So just to bring up the speed, we've got P1 is taken by Justin Ayrts. Danny Ko steals P2 in the dying uh, moments of that qualifying session. Equals did get pole uh, with his first run, but dropped onto P3. So new assist drivers are winning this one, uh, winning the, the qualifying session anyway. And uh, yeah, looking, looking like a good race here. Uh, McKander is leading the championship but is currently last because he did not set a time. And uh, Iceland is saying that's because Mac is trolling. And he's leading the championship, and he's trolling the championship at the same time. Is Mac leading it? I thought, is not Dan? It's actually McKender, um, but we are waiting on some results coming in from the FIA. Uh, so it's provisionally he's leading the championship. But yeah, it's McKender 116 points, Justin 114 Danny Ko 108. So Justin as well is uh, ahead of Danny Ko. But that's, I know there's a big incident in Monaco between Meepo and, and uh, Danny Ko. The FA are trying to, trying to push through that verdict. So that may change that result, may not. Okay. Um, yeah, I have, just to touch on it, on my issue. Um, I don't know how many people else use sound cards, but I have an independent sound card. And... When I turn my computer on, it has to click to activate. And it's usually if it's too cold, it won't click. So I have to restart and restart and restart until it clicks. It's so frustrating. And that was what the issue was. I wasn't sleeping. As okay. you can tell, I don't sound like I was sleeping. <laughs> so I was constantly trying to get my sound to work, and it was just a nightmare. But anyway, I think we are ready to go. Yep. Are we off, Chief? Yes, we are. We're off. Is this formation lap still? This is formation lobby app. Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to call it. Oh, the lights are off and Justin needs his way. That would so have been like the most uh, underwhelming wrist uh, commentary start we've ever done for just silence. <laughs> is this formation though? No. No, we're, we're good. We've got some time here. Yeah, but uh, we've got a lot of reserve drivers here today, Bob. Uh, but we've got the usual suspects of tier one. The tier one vets. 
but it's good to see Equals and Matt, who are top tier 2 drivers, mixing it up with these tier 1 guys. I would say X Crystals, but I mean, yeah. Nah. The thing about yeah. Crystals, right, is that he, he's actually quite a quick wee man, quick wee man, uh, quick wee driver. He is a wee man, actually. He's Italian, and they're naturally small. He's a funny Italian uh, man. Yeah, and, and so he, he actually can be pretty quick whenever he really puts his mind to it, but I just think he just doesn't really care too much. I don't mean that in a bad way. I just don't think he's that invested enough to really properly grind. Like, for example, Crawley, for example, has been grinding like this definitely this this season for sure anyway uh and, and the results are speak for themselves he's done such a great job in tier three um so yeah i mean that's the thing about crystals he can do it i think the only thing that people that kind of lets mr crystal down would be sometimes his wheel to wheel can be a little bit uh up close and personal let's say Would you? No, I just think he's right. Uh, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. He is. Uh, I totally agree. He is. He's someone. That's what frustrates me, and that's why I maybe harp on a bit too much. It's because when you see a driver like that, well, they have the potential to be like mixing it up at the top end of even tier one. He has the potential. We've seen it, but he just. He, I don't know what it is. He just. Yeah. I think he lacks practice. I think that's what it is. Or maybe, maybe, so. maybe time to practice. Maybe that's the issue, but. Could be, but I tell you what, it's great to see that there is like we've got almost a full grid. I know it is being stacked by reserves and quick reserves uh, at that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's never fun for anyone really whenever we don't have a much of a grid. But this is a quite a good grid. Nice to see equals here and Matt. Oh, Le Monsieur Matt in P4. That's a great result from him. Yeah, McKendrick is the only soft runner, the only guy one for softs. He's P17, so he's going for the old Max special last to first. All right, well, I'm going to run on board with the Monsieur Matt. And uh, let's see how they all get uh, on in this race start, Chief. Just in time, too. So I am. That's not a joke, but I'm just in time <laughs> uh, for this. So, yeah, a good job you pinged Kitty because I, uh, yeah, it's having trouble. Anyway, lights are on. And off we go. And Justin leads us away. Well, I think he did not maybe get quite as good as a launch as uh, Dan the Man, but... It's all negated here so far. Equals going up the inside, trying to get round Justin as well as Dan. Dan dropping down into P3, fighting it, but Dan needs to be careful. These guys uh, with the, the tier two guys with the line are quite feisty and they're not afraid to push it. We get a yellow further back. Someone is off. I think someone had a bit of an RG bargy mission there. Yeah, but, I think sorry, Nikai sorry. and Tanari got mixed up there. Sorry, Gobup. That's all right. So Meepo and Matt are really going uh, side by side. I love going side by side in this track. You can do it for most of the corners if you've got the... Uh, oh, who's this Tudge? Tudge trying to catch off on Matt. Uh, napping, and he went up the inside on the break point. You can do that. And now Matt is now under attack from Moa, another very quick driver. So Matt is uh, definitely in the in the thick of it as it stands. Of course, lap one is, of, of course, naturally... One of the best opportunities to gain positions, but most certainly in the uh, tier one, as Leps are Maxon is Maxon, <laughs> uh, Mackender is uh, passing Lepson. Lepson doesn't fight it too much, but yeah, you really do want to, uh, you know, make a get your get a move on in lap one here because if you let these tier one guys get into the rhythm, they will disappear very very quickly. And uh, yeah, see Mac getting around the uh, the turn the corner. Who's this weaving? Giannis is weaving. So, what was that all about? Giannis was weaving left, right, left, right, maybe kind of saying, please overtake me, kind of thing. <laughs> um, which is probably what it is, you know, just, you know, overtake and not kind of fight kind of a thing. Ooh, we we do have a, a car off. It's uh, Eagle Goose span out of the last corner. We've all been there. Uh, but unfortunately for him, well, not too bad. He's not too far behind, but yeah, six odd seconds behind the DRS train on lap two. No damage though, okay. so it's all good. Probably getting a wee bit of a cutback there on those nice mediums. Deploying to get up the inside. Oh, Noah kind of turned in a little bit early there and he had to get back out of it. This was a brave move by Noah. Crawley getting out of that one. Fight to live another day. Uh, but definitely, you know, the, the thing about Bahrain, I know some people don't like it, but I do enjoy Bahrain. <coughs> um, but what I enjoy about it is that there are so many places to, to line up a pass. And you can even set someone up corner after corner, you know, you know, almost... Uh, you can almost like psychologically position them to defend the corner. 
Oh, excuse me. To defend the corner, to then go for the cutback, which is what Crawley uh, did there. I get the hiccups. Oh, Crawley's getting passed by uh, McKinder. Yep, McKinder making good use of these uh, soft tires. Got himself from P7 to P8 in two laps. And uh, lap two is not even finished yet. So he is definitely looking good. But uh, yeah, the, I mean, obviously the tires will fall off earlier than these mediums and the hards. Yeah. Also, Chief, I might need you to keep a wee eye on the chat because I cannot find my phone. So, and I normally use my phone for the chat. Um, well, you'd be interested to know that there is a certain character here called Babalo saying Tipsy is drunk, I think. I'm not drunk. Just because my name's Tipsy doesn't mean I'm drunk, <laughs> all right? I'll have you know. Oh, what's going on here? we got a Ferrari and... Uh, who is that Ferrari? Who was a Giannis? A, a Tunari was getting twisty and slidey and everything trying to pass those guys. And I think, I think he passed... No, he just passed one. I thought he was going to pass two there. But yeah, uh, Tunaman's on the move. No, I am not drunk. In fact, I will inform you, Mr. Babalus, that even though I may be from Ireland, I actually don't drink alcohol. Well, to be said, I had a cider last night. That doesn't really count. I, I don't drink... Oh, Christos! There we go. Spin Spinala. The Spinala Italian has indeed spun. And he's going to rejoin on the Apex <laughs> in front of Fox. Uh, not really dangerous, but Fox would obviously would not have appreciated. Is Fox going to go for this? Ooh, no, he's not. But uh, yeah, drunk, not at all. Me, drunk? I'm drunk on life <laughs> and passion, Babs. A bit of passion. I think Ed Trissel might be drunk, you know. They're, they are known for drinking wine during the day. And uh, his driving is looking a bit questionable right now as he's P16 right behind Fox, who does manage to get past him. Uh, we often see this from Crystal. Domi has a, a little spin and then it just falls apart from that point onwards. Yeah, he kind of lags back and then he says, you know what, I'm out. But look up front, uh, we are we have DRS available, Danny Koo swinging out, he's going down the inside but yet yeah, not enough over speed even with that DRS. Tanari setting the fastest lap in P10 on those hards, that's interesting. And uh, if anyone knows uh, Dan the Man, right, and watches his stream, he will be, if you watch his live feed, right, he will be just sitting there and his wee camera will show as if he's just chilling. He's on a Sunday drive, no stress whatsoever. But uh, don't you worry, deep down, this guy is focused and he might be having a bit of gritted teeth, I would say, the fact that he does have uh, equals in between. Dan the Man would probably prefer to have uh, just Justin in front of him in P2, but. I think he's quite happy to let these guys fight. Equals, on the other hand, doesn't need to play ball here. I mean, he is a reserve, of course, so naturally you don't want to be getting too much involved in the title fight. But at the same time, he is allowed to fight. And, uh, you know, he, there's no there's no uh, friends here. He's here to win. And uh, he's done a good job yesterday in winning here against Christian. Sat behind Christian for quite a few laps near the end of the race and then got him on the last lap. So uh, he's well drilled into this track, Chief, and uh, certainly, given the opportunity, <clears throat> he will go for it. And uh, I would have liked to have seen Equals and even our gamer, uh, you know, in Tier 1 as well, if they, even if they could do the both tiers, because, like, they're, they're, they're good for it. Like, I mean, Equals is keeping up with equal, uh, with uh, Justin here and Dan the Man on pace and not really using any battery at all. So, yeah, but this might be the position change now for P1. And indeed, Dan uh, Justin is not fighting it. And uh, we have current Tier 2, previous Bahrain winner here yesterday from Tier 2, is now leading the field at Tier 1. Chief, there's a bit of action going on back further back there. Um, yeah. These medium. Oh my goodness, Naiku! Naiku is off. I think Lepson almost clipped him on the uh, going past him. So yeah, Naiku's off. Yeah, Giannis getting past uh, Tenarian, that's their finish rate as well, using DRS. So Tenari down to P11, so he has some work to do out there. Oh, on my word, uh, Eagle Ghost sent it down the inside. I don't know if you caught that ball, but... Uh, I did. Oh, my word, what was that about? <laughs> it might be for 16 and 17, but it's certainly pretty feisty. <laughs> it's a, it's yeah. like, I don't want to finish last. That's what that's about. I don't want the wooden spoon, I got plenty. <laughs> like that was yeah, literally my yeah. objective every race was not to finish last like that was the main objective for me <laughs> whenever we would go cart and chief uh, my younger brother says he doesn't mind coming last because he he would like a few wooden spoons and 
<laughs> he, he ultimately did come last. <laughs> At least you get something, I guess, yeah. Exactly, what do we get? A piece of metal. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Justin here is right behind uh, Equals. He probably will pass him here in the DRS. It makes sense to pass. Um, it would make sense to sort of throw yourself off. So, yeah, indeed, these guys are probably going to do a bit of switcheroo for the next coming laps. And Dan the Man Ava has Inc. is keeping a watching brief. Yep, Matt as well. As as well. Nico. Matt got past uh, Tuzer up to P5. So, Matt. Oh, and he got a. a oh. Big tank slapper on the uh, back end, very, very loose. Made him give it, get a bad exit, and Tuj gets that position back. So that hard work from Matt. I was about to say he's recovering nicely, and we have a yellow flag as well. Looks like a Alpha out there, maybe. Uh, yes, Tilda. He is off. Oh, Good safety car. car. Oh, that's full cool. course safety car. I was actually going to say Matt was really getting into the thick of it there, really properly racing but uh, one thing that he was falling victim to that we see the guys in the lower tiers do fall victim to is a lot of battery use and when you consider he was on 40 percent versus like the top guys on 198 you know who's to show you oh, who's this Matt, well super mac uh, makes sense he's pretty low battery he's pushing as hard as he can on these softs but this will be almost music to his ears i would imagine chief to get rid of these softs early safety car yeah it's perfect say. for him he's made up a bunch of position 10 positions in six laps and now can get a free pit stop essentially put on a fresh set of i imagine hards he may i don't know would he would he go for medium soft nah maybe no nah, i think he might stick on a whack a stick on a set of hards and run them um uh, well, would he actually? Because then you see if there's another safety car, he's perfectly in for the mediums. But with the hards, go I don't know. I would imagine he's probably going to go hard. Yeah, so if, see when I look. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say while we're under the safety car, can I go down and get my phone so I can keep an eye on the chat? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Two seconds, man. Two seconds. Yeah, so the interesting thing here is that these hard runners and uh, some of these medium runners, this is not a good time for uh, pit stop for them. Especially the hard runners. Uh, hard runners having to switch to mediums and i don't know about i don't think the mediums can get to the end from this point uh i don't think they can do 20 laps we are about to find out um but i believe they are either going to be very very uh yeah very very much fallen off by the time we get to the flag or they're just going to explode uh but yeah essentially everybody pitting uh, no one choosing to stay out, which is probably the probably the wisest option. Sometimes you would have a few guys maybe stay out and uh, just hope for a uh, another safety car to come and mm. save them. Um, but right now, everybody has pitted. Everybody on fresh tires. The guys on hards, they can get to the end. The question is, can the medium guys get to the end on these tires? 20 laps. Uh yeah, I'm surprised to see Max stick on the mediums, but here, you don't win three titles and not know what you're doing, you know. But uh, just got my phone out checking the chat. Not much happening in the chat. Get the chat bouncing, people. Come on. And I'm just seeing Babylus. Uh, here, I just think it's a bit rich from Babylus saying Tipsy is drunk, I think, in capital letters. And he isn't even... Sp is He's typing Tipsy, T-I-P-S-I. -I. <laughs> I think Babs is the one that's a bit drunk, not me. <laughs> That could be the case, yeah. I think Babs was a wee bit drunk yesterday as well. <laughs> yeah, I uh, shout out to Babs for covering that stream yesterday. It was good. Uh, without him, we would not have had a stream up. Um, so, sure. good job, Derman. Good job, Babs. Bit more passion is what we could do with. Yeah. That is, of course, anyone that doesn't know, I'm just having a bit of fun because Babs came on one time and said, Tips, you need more passion. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to Greece and show him some passion. Oh, that's maybe a bit. No, that's a bit hot, isn't it? That's a bit. Yeah, not that kind of passion. <laughs> if I was to spell a correct, you will not commentate on that. <laughs> we got ourselves a comedian here, man. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So, safety car. Is still out. A few Ooh. gaps forming up at the head. What? Yes, what? What? So, a guy at the back pitting. Tilda pitting. He already pitted and he's going in again. I like this. I actually don't mind this uh, strategy. 
I think uh, if you're at the back, you may as well try something else. You may as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, you've got nothing to lose. Well, well, actually, yes, because, well, I was going to say, Chief, see if you, right, see if you come last and you get the wooden spoon, right? Yeah. Um, let's say let's say that that's what you want. Let's say you want the wooden spoon, and then you pit on good tires, and then you finish second last. You could then effectively say that you have actually lost something. <laughs> Couldn't you? Because you've lost the wooden spoon. That is true. Yeah, that is true. That's an interesting way to look at it. It's all about perspective, isn't it? Exactly. I I have a joke for you. I, I know Babs is uh, he's already delivered the punchline, but what do ancient Greeks wear on their feet? And then look at Babylon's latest comment. Tennis Zeus. Ten tennis Zeus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> that's that's the gonna sting the place out. Another thing is, I did, did say a joke the last time, and Babylon and Punk didn't get it. And I was like, <laughs> that joke was, you know, well, I can't say it. Well, well I can say it. what's the difference between an enzyme and a hormone? Oh, that was it. That's yeah. That one, remember, and Babylon was trying to answer it, and it was like it wasn't to be answered. Uh, safety car yeah. in this lap. So everybody on mediums, Crawley on hards, Lepson the only one, the only other driver on hards apart from Nikos. So free on hards, everyone else on mediums. This is going to be interesting. Tilda on the freshest tires out there. What can he do at the back? Can he make that one lap extra? Uh, you know, uh, fresher tire count. We will are about to find out is Justin Aarts is leading our leading our uh, our field down into the final corner. He naturally will probably go early, which he has indeed. <laughs> as soon as I say that, has gone early. A lot of guys leave it a bit late, but not uh, Justin. He is going to get on with it. And Dan in that slipstream, look at that. He's probably going to be a late dive if he does it. Is that no? He's not. Dan is not afraid to get the uh, racy. As we've seen in Monaco, the man knows when it's time to win, he will go for it, but not yet. It's not time. I'll tell you what, Chief, he will be delighted to know that he is P2 and he has equals kind of not blocking his fight between Justin and himself. Um, but so far, everyone following suit here so far, everyone behaving themselves in this safety car restart. I think I've seen Mac having a bit of uh, action going on further back there. He does have two men behind him. Another very fast fin, and I would imagine that they'll probably be looking to get past Crawley here as quickly as possible. Uh, I think Crawley will probably not get much coverage today because he gets lots of coverage with Babless. Well <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I, th I think I think Crawley pays him or something. I, I'm convinced Crawley gives Babless money. I think <laughs> yeah, sponsorship fees or something. But indeed, here is Mac. Oh, Mac was trying to squeeze up the inside. And I think Crawley wants him to pass, but he doesn't want to take him out. So yeah, Mac up the inside here off, uh, to, uh, off uh, Crawley. And Crawley will be like uh, giving a big sigh of relief to fight to see that he's gone. But now here comes Tunaman. Tunaman now have a go. No, not doing it. Tunaman had a little bit of a look at it. But nothing doing. He might do it here, but what's all happening up front? Chief Dan the Man. Dan the Man is going for the race lead here in Bahrain. Uh, and Dan will be very happy that he's up there. Matt is up into P5, gets past Noah, I believe. But yeah, Dan the Man is continuing this battle on track with Justin Equals. Now is in Dan's position in the first stint, uh, keeping a watching brief. And is there anything else happening for the back? Giannis and Crawley are fighting around the exit of turn, what's that, one, two, three? Is that turn three or four, four, or something like that there? Um, yeah, it's on hard, so keep an eye on those guys, um, folks, 11 and 12, Crawley and Lepson, if they can keep it out of trouble. They may well come into this race later on, on those hards, so yeah, keep a wee eye on that. Um, any intel, Chief, or any, anything, any, any news? Anything no, I, I just think, like, what you're saying there, Crawley voice on hards, obviously dropping down the order, so right now he's questioning uh, that pit stop, but... As you say, later in the race, it should come to him. So right now, he just wants to try to keep his pace, try not to lose too much time if uh, these guys, these faster uh, tower guys, are uh, passing him. 
Um, he's got Lapson behind him now, so it should give him a little bit of a break. The P11, it's not uh, it's not on the bag yet. Uh, plenty of laps to go, and those hards should get to the end. So Crawley l potentially in a very good position right now. DRS yeah, but you see that? Yeah, as you see, Lapson has been pushing like crazy. He is draining his battery. Like he's <laughs> literally draining it dry right now. Five percent, five percent battery. He is going to struggle so much. Yeah, and we, we've tried to talk to him, but I think he needs to go to ERS Holix or something. Uh, he's just addicted yeah. to that ERS, isn't he? He, he absolutely, that is a good way of looking at it. He is addicted. He goes box. And look at that, he's got nothing, he's going to go for a cutback, it's not going to give, you've no battery to fight, Fox has got half a battery. Ah, such a shame. Yep. Such a shame to do that. Again, that's worked out perfectly for Crawley Boys, a 1.3 gap behind to the Fox on those faster tires, but, I mean, run about now is where they kind of, yeah, the drop off coming around about now in a few laps time maybe, as uh, Crawley Boys loose back in there for the corkscrew hairpin. Um, but yeah. Looking good for him, so we'll check in with him a bit later in the race and see how he's faring on those hards. But yeah, looking pretty good for Crawley out there. Yeah, and I tell you what, whenever Lapson drops off uh, his kind of teammate of Fox their DRS, uh, Crystal's is going to be all over him because uh, Crystal's has plenty of battery and faster tires. And again, this is you, people are going to witness what I have been crying about for season after season when you use too much battery. You've got nothing. But he's blinking now, he's blinking. Uh, Crystals will have seen that. So he should full attack this. Uh, he doesn't have DRS either as yet, so this is going to be taking candy from a baby for Crystals. And look at that. Lapson has nothing to defend with. Further up ahead here, we're getting a bit of a battling going on here. Tudge and Mackender and Mac and Noah, they're all getting stuck into this. We're going to see a bit of action running into this corner. Here comes Mac. Mac going up the side of Matt and Mac, uh, Matt is not giving this up he doesn't care who's beside him he's saying nope I'm fighting on track he might have to give this one up he might have to give this one up oh up ahead someone oh, spun up ahead there's no spun out ahead and McKinder had to navigate through that and uh, he still retains that P5 spot now that Matt or sorry, Noah span out. Noah down to P16. So that was all of his own doing. There was no one around him as far as I could see. Um, so that has worked out terribly for Noah. But McKender up to P5 crucially. And uh, McKender has work to do though. Look at that gap to the leaders. It's two seconds. So McKender will want to get a move on. He's had to use a lot of ERS as well. And not fighting to get to P5. But yeah, this is where the hard work uh, comes in. Um, getting that gap down to within the DRS range, 1.8, so he's already taken a bit out of it so far. And uh, yeah, look, Justin's uh, lining up Danico here, isn't he? Yeah, Justin would indeed have a be lining up. Dan giving him a bit of a wiggle, I think that's basically off you go. Uh, these guys know the drill when it comes to burying. It's all switch around until the last lap. Here comes Matt. I knew Matt was going to go for this. Oh my goodness, Matt as close as you can get beside a driver uh you're not gonna win friends like that if you're gonna overtake <laughs> that close oh my did you see that i i think i just that, caught it yeah that was yeah that was yeah i, I would be wouldn't be surprised if mac noticed that there it was very very close beside um making it clear that he is here um but jenny's tier two guys are here to fight um, and Matt is not afraid to take a gap up against the current Tier 1 Championship leader, and of course, as I like to say, Tier 3 time Tier 1 Champion. If Matt thinks he can ruffle with him, then fair play. Uh, Meepo as well, we haven't really talked about him much, but through all that pit stop and under the safety car, he's got himself up to P4 and is in this lead DRS train. He's just hanging out at the back. Plenty of ERS in his tank. So he is setting himself up for a good finish to this race. Potentially, uh, yeah, he's in touching distance of the win. Lap 13 of 29, 16 laps to go. And uh, yeah, Meepo being patient right now. And we, we haven't seen this from him before, but he seems happy enough to hold back for now as Tilda picks up the first penalty. And we've got to move further back as well. It looks like Lepson's coming under further pressure. Nikoi gets past him. 
um, on the same tires, and it looks like Lepson's going to get passed again by Eagle Gross. Although Lepson will have DRS to try to protect himself from it. Uh, Eagle not using any ERS, and that might cost him. Uh, oh, he's got the inside line. Oh. Lepson hanging around the outside. Noah is out of the session. Oh, he's retired in the pits. Ooh, and that's, uh, oh, that was dicey there. Oh, he is going to come out ahead. Matt, uh, tipped the back of Mac, nearly sent Mac spinning, and he lost himself out a position to touch. So it's a, a just what running on board with Matt. It's a, it's a very aggressive style of racing he's cut up today. And uh, it cost him there. He uh, just was a little bit late in the brakes and clipped the back end of Mac. And uh, Mac almost lost it, but he held on. And uh, Matt has now dropped down a position to P7. And uh, yeah, as you say, Noah out in the pits. Call it a day, probably after that spin, he decided, yep, I don't want no more of that. And he's backed out. But there's still plenty of time to go in this race, Chief. I almost, well, we are pretty much halfway now. And uh, don't be surprised if there's another safety car. But uh, Justin here is uh, right behind Dan Man. DRS activated. Both of these guys have pretty much full batteries. And uh, yeah, it's going to be just follow the leader, basically switch a rule and switch around and all that switching about yeah. is uh, what is the thing to expect. Uh, Eagle's doing a, a good job here, being very patient. Um, he uh, he did, uh, I think, has he won? I know he came podium in the top three. I think he came P2 in the first race of the season this year in Tier 1. Oh, and he's yeah, going side by side for turn one, two and three with Nikoi comes out ahead. Uh, Nikoi will get DRS. Oh, actually, Eagle Goose gets DRS. So that was able to. Oh, and there is a bump there. Oh, my word, it's Nikoi. Goes into the back of Eagle Goose. And that look, he came to a dead stop at turn four there after the contact. Uh, Nikoi may well have damage on his car. No visible damage, but yeah, that was quite a significant impact there. It actually stopped his car completely on track. Uh, so he has fallen down the order, but Eagle looking feisty out there. He's won this battle between Lepson and Nikau, and uh, he's now got Eagle Goose, or sorry, Crystals up ahead then. Uh, Eagles is uh, in some in sector two. He's really, really close to Justin. He's really putting the... Oh, Eagles! Nearly lost it! Oh my goodness. Maple will have seen that and will be starting to get a bit of confidence. Eagles nearly lost it there. And uh, oh, Justin getting a bit twitchy in the brakes. That's going to cost him. Look at that gap. Look at that already developed. Dan getting away. Justin's going to have to start deploying now. He will have the DRS. And uh, if he's going to pass, it's going to be a much later pass than the man might defend this one. Ooh, no, Meepo, Justin. Yeah, Meepo's going for a move around the outside of Equal. So is he going to be able to pull this off? He will have the inside for turn two. They go side by side. Oh, there is a bit of contact. And I think Meepo, uh, he hasn't taken the position, but he's got the DRS. But so has Equals. And again, side by side for turn four. There's a move further back as well, but I'm going to stay with this one because they're going to go through the, this uh, chicane here. Oh, and there is contact. I thought Equals had actually went off there, but he's managed to survive. M Meepo is up to P3. Yeah, Meepo did a great job. I have to say, good drive in there. He he, he pretty much got himself into a prime. See, as I said to you, as soon as Equals had that bit of a, a twitch, that would have been wake up time for Meepo to start attacking because he knows that Equals was struggling. And then he got his car into a beautiful position, the kind of a checkmate position in, in racing, where it's like you now have to respect Meepo's track position. And uh, throughout that whole thing, I, I was pretty confident he was going to get that. He's done a great job. So good job, Meepo. Yep. Up and, to P2. And, and Tuj oh. as well. Uh, Tuj has got ahead of McKender. But crucially, Tuj now within DRS range. Oh, he, as I said, he just came out. He's back in again, McKender. If Tuj is in DRS range, McKender is also part of this DRS train now. And that's all the way to P1. P1 to P8, DRS train. But the Mac has no battery, Chief. He's really pushing the extreme within this... Uh, Within this uh, DRS zone, and uh, yeah, Jan, that this switcheroo at the front continues. <clears throat> um, but I tell you what, these guys are starting this. There is a bit of a, a train developing now in for behind P1, which is uh, an amazing thing to see. That uh, you don't normally see trains at P1, normally in the middle of the pack, but nope, 
We have a train in Bahrain, folks, for the P1 position here. And we have Mac <clears throat> starting last up to getting himself up to P6 here, but no battery. And he's going to hope that these guys don't drift away Ooh, too Eagle's much. He's going on the inside. You see that? Meeple. Oh, my word. Meeple having to go around the outside. But Eagles, what a move from him. Looks like he's got it done. But again, they're side by side. Meeple getting a better exit and takes the position back. Wow, what a what a move from Eagles there. Yeah, I seen that up ahead. I was watching the Mackenda there. But <clears throat> uh, uh, wanting to join this pack will surely be Matt. He's, uh, I think, been charging a little bit of battery, keeping a watching brief. You know what, anything can happen in this race. I did say there could be another safety car, how uh, close these guys are racing. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's really, really good racing. Worth pointing out that Dan the Man and Justin, of course, uh, are uh, you know, original no assists, or sorry, tier one drivers, who are no assists. And of course, Meeple and Equals are uh, two of the highest ranking uh, current standing uh, assist guys. So that's an interesting development as well. You're getting the two non assists fighting each other and the two assists fighting each other so I thought that was just a little bit of interesting uh, information yeah and it, it, you know what's interesting as well as you see Danny Koo taking back P1 it looks like Danny Koo and Justin are working together whereas Meepo and Equals are definitely not working together and uh, seem to be costing themselves time they need to be careful about that because they could drop out of the DRS range of these front two and uh, that will uh, just trigger a whole load of overtakes I think from behind as yeah, the DRS, it, it's good to have, you know, offensively, but it also plays a defensive role as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Oh, Justin, sorry, Justin getting a wee bit twitchy there. I think he kind of closed in on Danny a bit too quick. And, uh, yeah, that got a bit hurry. But I tell you what, though, Justin and Dan may be... I don't think necessarily they're working together, you know, as a team. Uh, but I, I get what you're saying, Chief. I think they know this. They know the score. No one's going to win it, you know, in the next lap or so. They know that they're so close on pace that it's going to be DRS. So there's no point fighting it. But one guy that's not going to play ball will be Meepo. If he can get close enough, you do you know he's going for it, and he is not here to play games. He is here to win, and win he is most certainly going for. Yeah. What is it? Not content. With that fighting though, he's had to use a lot of ERS, so that that might be a factor later in the race as uh, the guys ahead. Oh, oh and Danny Coe in the pits. This is it. This is it, Bob. These medium runners, this must indicate that they need to pit. They're not going to be able to get to the end. That is great news for Crawley Voice. Crawley up to P7 uh, with three yeah, drivers well, ahead pitting. This is what I was saying, Chief, earlier. Remember I said that to keep a wee eye. Uh, in the latter stages of this race, Crawley and Lepson moving up the field. Now, the reason Lepson hasn't moved up as high as Crawley, you know why? Because he's still a 10% battery. <laughs> You've got no battery. If you drain it, you will not be able to fight or defend. You just get you get locked into kind of a, a like a, it's like you just get locked into this mode where you're just kind of just cruising around. You can't really make any dent on the race at all. Uh, whereas uh, Crawley has been the conserving, and you, well, he's been properly using now, to be fair. He's drained his battery, but he's done a, a better job. And uh, yeah, I was just saying there, Larson said in the chat that he didn't expect the racing to be this good at this track. Well, I, I, can, I can understand what he's saying, but whenever you've got a, a good field of drivers and it's quite full, you actually do get racing like this. I, you know, I do enjoy Bahrain for this reason. Uh, I think I did point it out earlier, Chief, that there are so many different corners that you can overtake on or set someone up to for an overtake you know uh i, I enjoy bahrain a lot and i think these guys are doing a great job the only dnf we've had was a self-retirement in the pits so that's how good these guys are doing we have flesh river in the chat saying assists are allowed in tier one now yes they are allowing assists this season in tier one uh you can see these guys quite a few of these guys have got assists at the moment uh, the main the main contenders, of course, Mac and Tunari and uh, Justin and Dan, they, of course, don't use anything. Yeah, we got, but, Justin, but, speaking of Justin, we got him in the pits. He's about to come out. I'm very interested to see where he comes out. I think Danny Coe is going to be ahead here, but by how much, that might be quite significant. As, uh, ooh, yep, yeah, he's within, within touching distance, but equals is now between Justin and Danny Coe, crucially, but Justin on soft tires. Danny Coe on those mediums. Equals as well. Opting for the soft. Meepo on softs. 
who has made the right call here as Daniko gets past Naiko, and that, that that's the trick here. Oh, as Naiko almost goes into the back of Daniko, that, that that's the trick is how fast can you navigate this traffic? Because some drivers have opted to stay out on these old tires. Oh, uh, equals going on the inside of Naiko, and yep, those soft tires are far superior. At this point, we might see a move from uh, Justin as well on the inside of the corkscrew. He thinks about it. Oh, and the door's left open, so he goes for it. Um, but that will have cost him a little bit of time, bit of an untidy overtake there from Justin. Uh, equals did not, or Naiko, sorry, didn't want to play ball, it seemed. Yeah, but I think Naiko was being very uh, helpful though to the drivers. You know, he really was getting out of the way and did a good job. The thing for Dan now is paramount that he's able to, you know, not get held up by these guys. Uh, the traffic, the traffic is kind of, it will help him uh, as long as Equals is behind him and he can get past the cars in good places then uh, that will help dan because that will, will of course naturally be taken out uh, pace every lap uh, it will be taking pace out of those softs uh and uh, yeah here, here comes equals my goodness he's draining his battery down the man making a defensive position oh and, oh uh, justin yeah. good on the inside uh, the door was left open he, uh, justin trying to follow danny Coo's uh, line through there there is more contact on the exit Looks like Justin might have this down into turn four. The inside line is crucial, uh, but Equals might be able to carry a lot of momentum around the outside. Ooh, and he's left just about enough room. There was contact there, and I think Equals went off track there momentarily. But Justin airs up to P9. That might be crucial as he now has Danny Ko ahead on these medium tires. So I imagine Justin's going to try and... Oh, as Danny Ko navigates the traffic nicely, is Justin going to be able to follow him through? He does. He's going to be right on the back of Danico and this DRS threat is coming up. Uh, Danico as well getting DRS. So we may see a move here from uh, Justin yeah. on the start finish route. He goes almost off track passing laps and I think he was a bit annoyed at uh, the little bit of contact there. And that's dropped it. Oh, equals off this gap and he's just going to be passing by Equal, or sorry, Eagle Ghost and uh, Justin. Ooh, Justin's looking to get a cutback. On Dan, this is the real fight here for the race win. Really, it's Dan and Justin, and there's a lot at stake. A lot of history too, as well. If anyone's not familiar, uh, Justin has been so close to winning the title, and he's just missed out by a point or two to either McKinder or Danny. And uh, yeah, so he is very familiar with uh, these guys, and very much determined to get the title uh, win off these guys. Uh, what's going on here? Arson's saying that maybe it was just that uh, my race isn't tier 2 and 3 were quite boring. Uh, maybe. Uh, I have to confess I didn't see them. I was uh, otherwise engaged. I think they say I was doing God's work, is the way to put it. I was off doing God's work. Just in getting past the X-Crystals there. X so there are a number of drivers. I wonder if they're uh, on these mediums. Are they going to try to go to the end? Or are they going to do a late switch to softs but uh yeah justin has three drivers ahead crawly voice is one of them crawly voice we think will go to the end on these hearts but yeah 5.6 is the gap and we're going to see that gap come down significantly in the next few laps danny co just wants to keep in touch and distance off justin in the hope that those tire those soft tires start to fall off and the mediums come to him and that should be the case i'm thinking but we're about to find out yeah this could be another <laughs> This could be another Silverstone, Chief. This could oh, be yeah. another lap, lap jobby here. Um, and not necessarily with the DRS. Um, <clears throat> because those soft, lap two, three, what's that, three, but lap six or seven, well, how long do they last? About six laps, sub region and barrier. Uh, so 24, uh, 25, 26, 20, lap 27 or 28. Yeah, do you know what? It actually might well indeed be a maybe last lap job. Uh, uh, you know, Ooh, Dan the man. Uh, decider here for this uh, race between Dan and Justin. But of course, they do have three guys up ahead that are yet to pit and may not pit. I would imagine the mediums will pit, but Crawley probably won't. Ooh, Tanari gets a time penalty that was coming out of turn three. Look like he just went wide there across the line. One too often, and the penalty for Tanari in P12. He's got McKender behind him. These guys decided to go, go into the pits late. For those uh, soft tires and it's uh, cost them a lot of time they're having to navigate through a lot of traffic as well as oh my word lepson gets out of the way in a kind of dangerous fashion 
Yeah. Um, almost caught me off guard, but McKenna was ready for it. So was Tanari, thankfully. Yeah, if, if it is actually a rule in real Formula One, you're not allowed to potentially intentionally stop on track as uh, Matt passes Eagle Ghost on those 16 lap old hards. Mac passing two man as well. So moves all over the place, Chief. Not quite too difficult to follow at all. We can kind of predict it. Um, I'm pretty clean so far, I have to say. A few uh, bit of contact in, in some corners, but that's what you expect. It is racing after all. And uh, we're not going to just let these drivers are not just going to uh, buy over and let you just pass. Of course, they have to fight. As Crawley moves up into P2 with the DRS. And Tudge, of course, ahead with seven seconds ahead. You know, he might actually not pit, Chief. Tudge might not pit. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, I mean, he's leaving it very late if he does pit, but Danny Ko is doing a great job here. He's actually got ahead of Justin, and that's key for him, isn't it? Uh, I, I see those softs. Like, they're, they're, they, their peak life is, like, you know, up to the free lap mark, maybe yeah, four laps. Yeah. But once they you hit that 21%, it's a massive drop off. And I think we're in that range now. Danny Ko is going to come alive, I think. And this may well be in the back for Danny Ko. I don't want to curse him as he is trying to navigate some more traffic. He's got Fox on the outside. Down the inside goes Danny through uh, the corkscrew hairpin. And uh, yeah, Justin will want to navigate Fox as quickly as possible. He doesn't want to lose sight of Danny Ko. Still in with a chance of a win is Justin and equals. Uh, Meepo lurking in the background as well there, but those soft tires, yeah, they are definitely uh, past their peak performance. But we've seen Justin pull out some really mad performances on old tires before, as uh, Equals also making his way past Fox in the background. See now Dan purposely lifted uh, behind Crawley. He wants that DRS, um, so yeah, that's going to protect him from Justin because Dan could have passed him there, but of course. He wants that DRS. Uh, if Dan didn't do that, uh, of course, he would be under threat from Justin. So, yeah, the more laps Dan leads ahead, the better, because the softs are dropping off the cliff. Five second, 10 penalty for, for Tuna Man. And you might have seen a yellow earlier on, Chief, uh, as Equals, hang on, Equals is going to navigate Crawley here. Yeah. And Amipo will also be looking, but uh, Equals has no battery. So people be mindful of that. Oh, look at this. Meepo trying to go side by side with Crawley. Crawley getting out of it. And uh, yeah, more yellow. Oh, that's that yellow. Yeah, that yellow you might have seen earlier on, Chief, was actually Tuna. He uh, spun out of this exit, actually, what Meepo's on. And uh, yeah, he got uh, into the wall and uh, decided that uh, he's had enough of barrying. Turn 10 is notoriously difficult. Yeah. Probably one of the most difficult corners in Formula 1. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm looking at two here, Bob, as you say. Looks like he might well... I mean, at this point, you, you kind of have to stay out. There's no point in pitting. He's going to lose so many positions, be outside of the points. He may as well just throw, throw it at the wall and see what sticks. Uh, the gap currently 6.6. .6. We have four laps left after this one. Uh, we, we've seen this before from Tuch. I think he won a race, or he, uh, he at least got a he bagged a podium. And he went long and very long in old tires, whereas everybody else pitted for fresher ones. And he was able to, to maintain his pace. Currently uh, 6.5 as he hits into Justin lap 26. In. Justin going for the move on Danny. Danny able to defend this pretty well. Oh, yes, nicely defended there. But Justin's going to have a cutback here with DRS and battery. Justin with 40% battery. He's not using it though, Justin. Um because which it makes sense because Dan has the DRS on him. He had the DRS on him there. Um, yeah, so Dan using excuse me, using battery here to hold on to this. Um, these softs are not dropping off just yet, Chief. Um, and equals. Uh, I'm sure Dan would have been liked to have equals harassing the gearbox of that uh, Alpha Tori, but um, nothing given just yet. Yeah, and that gap are... from P2 to P1 is uh, is coming down, but very slowly. Uh, 0.5 so far on this lap. 
Um, I don't know if that's going to be enough. I mean, they should get within touching distance, but whether or not they're able to they have enough time then for an overtake is another matter. So, two's doing a good job out there. 5.9 is the gap. We'll keep a very close, on that, close eye on that as we have three laps to go. Essentially, uh, yeah, Dan has to, he has to like pick up two seconds per lap to have any chance of winning this race. So, uh, Tuj as well, lap 20 uh, on these mediums. Are they going to get to the end? Are, are they going to explode? Well, that Justin is going for the move here on Dan. And I think Dan might not mind it, believe it or not, too much. Because he does have a few more laps to go. And he'll probably want to save up a little bit of battery. Here comes Dan. He's coming back at Justin, but not going for it. It looks like Lepson's going to retire. He does indeed retire in the pits. He has decided to call it a day. And uh, yeah, Crawley was up close to someone there. But yeah, I'm keeping an eye on this battle of the front chief between uh, Justin and Dan. The only thing that could cause a little bit of a hiccup here uh, would be equals. But of course, equals has basically no battery worth talking about, really. 20%. Uh, not really much worth talking about. Dan will be looking, well, will be hoping, of course, for those softs to die soon. Um, but Tudge is doing such a brilliant job. Still five seconds, almost lost a second on that lap. And you do the math, folks. And he will still be up front by the end of lap 29, unless they drop off, like, significantly. Or, unless, of course, he gets a puncture. Yeah, that, it, you guess what I'm wondering. Is he going to get a puncture? He is starting to lock up a lot, uh, especially in these heavy braking zones, and there's plenty of them on, on this track, so that is definitely going to take its toll on the tyre. It might come to, down to that RNG factor as to whether the tyres blow, because I'm sure that they're, if they're not at 75, they're definitely... Uh, yeah, if they're not at 75, then they're they're probably over 75 already, as Danny Co again takes that P2 spot from Justin uh, heading into Turn 1. Uh, and as uh, John says, so no victory today, sad face. Unfortunately, I don't think Meepo is in the best position to make a race win here. There would have to be something quite dramatic up ahead to take out four drivers for him to get this race win. Yeah, or and, and, and Bob, it definitely looks like if Tuj can get to the end on these tires, he's going to win this race. He's the one who stayed out on these old mediums. He was one of the only drivers to do so. Uh, one of the only lead drivers to do so and look at it it's paying off right now he's got one and a half lap to do he must be sweating it big time uh the gap is down to four seconds danny cook can now see Tuj up the road there just heading through the the corner ahead and that will spur danny Ko on but he danny Ko has a problem he is just in behind him running very close through these uh for the penultimate corner here See, if this is getting really squeaky bum time now, this is it. Justin is in actually in a good position here uh, to take this off Dan. He will not pass him here. Watch this. He will not pass. He wants that DRS. And uh, Dan the man is a basically a sitting duck here. There's not much he can go for, except what Dan will probably want to do is he knows he's not going to be able to defend this, but he might be able to get him on the, on the, the second DRS. Uh, and that might be where it is. Justin has just a little bit more battery uh, than Dan. Uh, but Dan does have the DRS. And let's see what's going to happen. Tudge, I think, is definitely going to do this. It's going to be a fantastic win for Dodge, Tudge if he does this. But this is the battle here. Justin and Dan. And Justin is in prime position for this P2. Uh, on the last lap... Dan not having much battery, neither does Justin. He's got a bit of a gap left over him here of half a second. One more DRS, and I don't think it's going to be enough. I have a feeling that Justin has got the job done here for P2, which is absolutely paramount uh, for his title fight against just our Dan the Man. Here we go. DRS activated. And uh, Dan the Man is going to just squeeze up here on Justin. So this is it. They can see Tudge up ahead. I don't think the race win is uh, on for them, but this P2 chief is so paramount and so pivotal for this uh, uh, fight, this tier two or tier one fight. This is it, Dan. Everything you've got. 
just as the point they're going to negate each other it's going to be too little too late oh my goodness this guy's catching him fast he's not going to be able to do it it's not going to be a last lap thing and Tudge is going to cross the line chief on 23 basically lap old mediums to take the win in tier one Justin takes P2 and Dan closely behind in P3 what a race and of course the honorable mention of McKender starting last finishes P6 chief yep Great finish to the racer. I uh, I was keeping a close eye on Tusher. I, I was I was wondering if his tire was going to blow. He did it. I think the question on everybody's lips is, how how old were those tires? Like, what was the percent on those tires? Um, that was an incredible call from him to stay out. I'm sure he uh, you know he was doubting himself at several points during that stint, but it pays off in the end. He takes another win in tier one incredible result from him but yeah justin finishing ahead of danico that's going to do him wonders for the championship and uh mckender finishing p6 that's gonna i think he's he's gonna drop out of the uh the lead of the championship we may well see justin regain that lead position in the tier one drivers championship larson saying great job tuj ice one incredibly happy as well tuj the goat um what a what a uh, racer that was great i love seeing different strategies play out play out as uh Tuj levitates on the podium man that performance by Tuj was just fantastic i mean definitely contender for driver of the day in fact probably driver of the day they finished tier one in the race lead on 22 slash three old lap mediums incredible scenes Tier 1 always delivers, Bob. We know this, don't we? Tier 1 has the best of the best, the best drivers, and, of course, the most sexual people commentating. <laughs> Did I say sexual? Sorry, I meant to mean the best. Sorry. If you're into old people, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I'm trying to... I'm just messaging to get your, get your butt into the commentator's booth. We need to speak to you. We have, we have questions... As I try and spell interview on my phone, I need my glasses. There we go. The standings are on screen. Let's have a look. Tuj P1, what a performance. Pits once. Everybody else, well, most people pitting twice. Crawley voice as well, P8 in the end, so I was able to hold on for some decent points. Uh, but yeah, Tuj P1, Justin P2, Danny Ku P3, equals representing tier 2 nicely there with a P4 performance, beating Meepu for P5, McKender. Yeah, uh, the trolling strategy did not work out for him today, but P6 nonetheless is uh, not to be scoffed at. P7, Matt, uh, P8, as we mentioned, Crawley Voice, Fox, P9, Giannis, P10 as well. So Eagle Ghost just missing out, Crystals as well just missing out. And uh, yeah, I think it's that time, Bob, we head over to the interview booth. Okay. Or maybe they come over to us. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I did that one time. I actually moved myself into the interview channel. It was very confusing. As uh, yeah, We do have Justin. We'll bring Justin in. Okay, Justin, welcome. Uh, Hi. Great rest from you. I know you're, you've are you been sick. I read in, uh, in the <laughs> Discord today. You've not very well, but it seems like your, your performances are not being affected by the illness. Uh, just tell us about your race today and uh, how it feels to come P2, given where you are in the championship right now. Overall, happy. Disappointed I uh, couldn't get P1. Um, I feel like it was on had we not gone all the, I don't want to call them lapped cars, but you know, to us they felt like lapped cars with the tire difference. And um, yeah, I think for what it was today, it was a pretty good result. Especially championship wise. Yeah, championship wise, you finished ahead of McKender, who was leading this one provisionally, and then Danico as well uh, is in P3. So, um, yeah, that, that's looking good. And we're, I think you're going to be leading the championship going into the next race. Well, again, it's depending on FA results for uh, yeah. Monaco. Uh, we're still waiting on that one come through. That could affect the the, thing, the uh, results a little bit. But yeah, I mean. What were you thinking about Tuj? Were you thinking like, oh, we're going to get this guy's on these old tires? Were you hoping possibly that they blew up in a devastating fashion? Or were you just, yeah, what, what were your thoughts in those final laps? I had a feeling, I had a gut feeling um, that the mediums could make it to the end. 
I don't want to say comfortably, but they would have made it to the end enough. Uh, not in the 70s, but like in the 60s. Um, but I think ultimately what me and Dan did was the right call to do the two stop. Because I think um, had it not been for, like I said, all the uh, all the traffic. And I think I had a couple times where Danny um, went for the overtake into turn one instead of, you know, trying to do our share um, to get to twos. I think we probably would have caught him with a lap or two to go. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just, you know, can't really take a, take any credit from where it's due. I mean, um, it's easy to say, oh, yeah, if this didn't happen, we would have easily got him. But he, uh, he did no mistakes on 60, 70 lap old mediums versus uh, myself and Dan absolutely raging to... For the yeah. championship, so I think overall, I'm good for him. Yeah, I mean, when I saw him not pit, I was like, they, they can't get to the end. There's, there's no way. <laughs> uh, but I was proved wrong, as I often am. Um, so yeah, Justin, you're in a very good position. You've been here before, though, and I'm sure you don't want to put all your eggs into one basket. Um, four races to go, I believe. Is it four or five, maybe? Three? No. Uh-huh. I think it's at least four. Uh, what do we got? Japan, it is four. Dunham, it is four. Sardi, and Austria. So four races on the table. Uh, yeah, I mean, what what do you think? Are, are the butterflies starting to kick in? Are you getting, <laughs> getting nervous? Or are you just, again, just trying to focus on one, one race at a time? I think today was less uh, butterflies in my stomach. It was more uh, bacteria in my stomach. But uh, <laughs> I think for the final four races... Looking forward to them. They're all pretty good tracks, for me at least. Uh, apart from Jeddah, that's going to be interesting. And Austria as well. And Netherlands. I mean, to be fair, all of them are DRS chicken tracks, so it's not going to be too great in that regard. But we'll yeah. have some fun, and uh, hopefully and we'll get the championship. Another question I just want to ask before you go is, uh, does the fact that you're, you know, it is looking quite promising, there is a great opportunity here to win the Tier 1 title, does that factor in to how you approach your race in terms of your practice? Like, are you doing more practice now, or are you just, again, treating it like any other race? <laughs> to be brutally honest, I didn't really practice much for uh, <laughs> Bahrain, apart from today, because of my illness. Yeah. But um, I'm trying to take a laid back approach i don't want to practice too hard because i feel like that's when uh um what's the expression i feel like that's when um i feel like stakes get too high and i start losing my head and then i start doing yeah. too many mistakes on track because like you said i've been in this unfortunate scenario multiple times where i feel like i have the pace to win the championship but then something happens so just like taking this one race at a time if it happens to be good it happens to be good and if there's a championship at the end of the day then so be it Okay. Well, yeah, I think that's a healthy way, healthy way to approach it. But yeah, Justin, thanks very much for joining us in the commentators booth. Like, uh, we do wish you well in your recovery. Hopefully, you feel better for uh, Japan next week. Um, <laughs> Thank you. It sounds horrendous. Two week fever. I've had that before. It's not not pretty, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, next week you will be feverless and uh, winning again. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us in the commentators booth. Appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye. And then we have the man of the moment, the driver of the day, as nominated by Bob. I can't go against it. What a uh, call from you to stay out uh, on those old mediums. What th- The question, I think, in everybody's lips is, like, what percentage were your tires on crossing the line today as you won Bahrain? Last corner, they turned uh, 75. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay. I, I was saving them the whole time, uh, and my strategy from the start was this: uh, when the safety car came out, from that onwards, yeah, I but... I knew I would go till the end. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna ask you that as a follow up question. Like, at what point did you feel like you were committed to the strategy, or were you ever tempted to switch it? Like, you know, as you have, I I, I don't know about you personally, but anytime I'm in a race and I I pick a strategy, I always have doubts. I'm like. Yeah, maybe that's this is the wrong strategy. Maybe I should pit. Uh, did you have a race engineer like kind of guiding you through it, or were you just? <laughs> I just went down the Noah where uh, kind of uh, my race engineers, but uh, yeah, uh, I I don't know. Uh, usually I question the strategies whether you stay out, but today I didn't. And 
well, it paid off. Yeah, and at what point, you know, you must have thought, like, these guys probably or possibly might catch me. At what point were you like, I got this, you know, I'm, I'm going to win? Uh, From the start of lap uh, 28, probably. Nice. Yeah, I think at that point you you're about five seconds ahead, yeah? Yeah. Nice job. Uh, how does it feel then to win tier one in such a dramatic fashion then? Uh, really good. <laughs> it's yeah. been a long time coming. Yeah. Is it is it your first tier one win? Yeah. Yeah. Oh right. I I I honestly felt like you'd won a, a race before. I know you've finished on the podium before, but that's great to hear. This is your first tier one tier one win. Um, I mean, yeah, that that must motivate you a lot. You obviously have the pace to win, and. Uh, a great strategy today. Well, that strategy call was that your own doing, or was that Icewind and Noah kind of influencing that? Yeah, it was me. Good job, man. That it. I mean, you you will sleep uh, happily tonight, man. You'll have a big smile on your face when yeah. you're in bed. Uh, but yeah, I mean, driver of the day, the race win, full points for you in the standings. Um, yeah, incredible. I I don't know what else to say actually, uh, Bob. Have you any questions for Touche? Uh, no questions. I'm just just amazed, like everyone else is, really, that you know to, to take the race win in Tier One is hard enough, but to do it on yeah. that old mediums and Bahrain of all places, I, I, you know, I said at the start, or sorry, at the end of the race, there, driver of the day for me, and uh, I stand by it because, uh, you know, whenever you were about was about six seconds or so ahead. Me and Chief and I were expecting that, you know, that Dan that would start eating that time pretty quickly, but he really wasn't. You, you were doing such a great job and keeping a, a really high level of pace that uh, just no, I have no questions. Just wanted to congratulate you again and commend you on a fantastic race win, man. Yeah, thank you. I, I saw him pointing out that you actually did win a race in Tier One, but you lost it on a penalty. Yeah, so that's <laughs> my first race in, in the whole of uh, Slipstream legal racing. <laughs> it was uh, season 11 Netherlands or 10, season 10 Netherlands. That's probably where I got mixed up. But yeah, Tush, what a... Yeah. Oh, a final question. How do you pronounce your name? Uh, <laughs> Are we saying it yeah, right, basically? <laughs> <laughs> uh, touch is fine. Touch. It's good. Okay, Touch. Okay, well, again, thanks for joining us in Competitive Booth. Great win from you, and we look forward to seeing uh, you in next week's race at Japan. Yep. Take care, bro. Take care, bro. All of us. Right, Bob, that is it. Another one in the bag. That is round 10, I believe. We've got four to go. Japan next week. Very much looking forward to that one. We have Jeddah, we have Austria, and I think Netherlands is the other race. It's heading down to the wire. I mean, it's it's at the minute it's a freeway battle for the uh, title of Tier One. You love to see it, and uh, with Tuj with performances like that, he could well see himself enter the fray if he uh, keeps winning. Um, Meepo as well and Tanari both with uh, a lot of points, so they're still not out of it. But it's looking very much like a ship shaping like a a run down to the flag between Justin McKender and uh oh, really? Danny Co, yeah. So how could you oh, forget that? I know. I, know. I, I was like staring at his name as well. Wanna <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's been a long stream. Um, it's been another glorious one. What a finish. What a win from two dramatic fashion. It doesn't get better than that, Bob. We are absolutely blessed to be a tier one commentator. So long may it continue. And uh, thanks again for joining us on the stream, uh, Bob. Been a pleasure once more. And to everybody watching, hit that like button and uh, subscribe if you haven't done already. We'll be back next week for some more action. Uh, take care and good night.